Alrighty, uh, Dave Prater, Super Motocross World Championship announced today. Um, let's go back to the beginning though. You talked about, you know, COVID happened and you guys had to readjust kind of your strategies and everything like that. Um, give us a little brief timeline of, you know, when this started, when you and Kerry Joe started working together and when this all came about. Yeah, well, it's, um, so in March of uh, 2020, Daytona Supercross, I think it was March 7th, if my memory serves, but we went, we met with Kerry, we met with Davey, and just really in an effort to talk about how we could grow the sport, even if it was just promoting each other and helping out because we truly are one sport and we'd never acted that way before. So we met in Daytona, walked out of the meeting, feeling good, everything was great, without really any big plans, just, hey, we'll run our your videos at our events and you run our videos at your events and we'll promote each other. And then the next week, Indy Supercross was shut down and we were all sitting around going, oh no, what do we do? And so we literally went from that initial meeting to the next week working together in bi-weekly meetings and talking about how we're going to get Supercross the championship finish. We had seven rounds left to go. Um, we knew we were in a tight crunch because it was March 14th or so, and we had to finish by May 5th. Um, and MX Sports was going to start the pro motocross season mid-May. So we knew we were in a tight crunch, and we needed to get some stuff done. So we started working together right then. And... Kerry and team were extremely, extremely helpful, and they ended up shifting the pro motocross season and doing it later so we'd have time to get those seven rounds in in uh, Salt Lake City. And from there, Kerry and Kenneth's relationship just grew. Um, like they said in the press conference, I mean, they're both family-owned businesses, second generation. They've got a ton in common that I don't necessarily know. They would have had the opportunity to even get to know each other like they did, but COVID forced them to do that. And you know, they've really built a true partnership and friendship out of this. So I think really that was the that was the genesis of it. And then, you know, two and a half years later, here we are at the LA Coliseum announcing the Super Motocross World Championship. So uh, it's been exciting, but it's been a lot of work over those two and a half years. Yeah, and obviously there's been some give and take. Um, you know, the Nationals is going to be one round shorter. You guys had to give up Monster Cup. How was, you know, kind of navigating those hurdles to come to a conclusion on, you know, who would shorten the series, who would do what so that you can actually fit this in at the end of the year? Yeah, it was a lot of it was a lot of negotiations. You know, um, all, both companies had to sacrifice. So, Feld Motorsports, the Monster Energy Cup, was extremely important to us. It'd become a marquee event. The same with Pro Motocross and Kerry and having those 12 rounds. But collectively, you had to get together and do what's best for the sport. So, um, Pro Motocross, as you said, gave up the one round. We gave up the Monster Energy Cup, and Super Motocross was born out of that. Uh, right now, the finale next year is going to go into October, October 12th. Um, is the plan moving forward to go that late in the future? Are you trying to condense the schedule in any form, or, or how, the, how will that work? Yeah, so we had to do, because the LA Coliseum and um, USC plays here, the college football season, the schedule's not announced until November. Mm. But they do know they're playing Notre Dame on October 14th away. So... Unfortunately, we had to push it to October 14th this first year, but in 2014 moving forward, we will end the season September 30th or before. Okay. Um, but another great thing about us working together was the overall schedule. So we're able to do a better cadence of breaks for the athletes, for the teams um, throughout the season. So now instead of doing 17 races in 18 weeks, we actually have a second break within Supercross. And then, so we've spread out the races in an effort to, again, give guys time to recover. Right, and then obviously the TV deal announcement today, signing with NBC, uh, NBC and NBC Sports moving forward, gonna be on Peacock for all 31 races. Uh, how instrumental was it to get that hurdle done as well? Obviously, um, you guys have been kind of flip-flopping with your TV deals and stuff like that, and now you're one holistic schedule with the TV as well. Yeah. Well, that's actually, besides the COVID situation and working together to get the championships done, that was the initial really strong push post-COVID is to take the media rights to market together. And so, you know, it's, all, it's been a challenge in the past. You watch Supercross on one uh, platform and you watch Motocross on another. And so this is going to be great for the fans because you know you'll watch Anaheim 1 on Peacock and NBC and you'll watch Pala on Peacock and NBC, and you'll watch the LA Coliseum, the same platform. So simple, easy to follow, and really that was a huge hurdle because obviously this doesn't, this, it's a lot harder if we don't have a strong media partner. So, um, you know, that was one thing that right off the bat, exponential growth and exponential excitement when we went out 
to market with the media companies, once we came up with the playoff, everybody got excited. So we knew we had something. Yeah. And then obviously the, the purse has increased as well. You have the million dollar for the champion, the $500,000 for the 250 champion in Super Motocross. Um, how important was that to, you know, felt as an organization to, you know, kind of hike that up to a degree to get the riders more excited about this series as well? Yeah, I mean, the purse has always been, we've always wanted to make a larger purse. And the fact that we were able to come together, again, it goes back to the exponential value of bringing the two together rather than two fragmented parts. Um, it's worth more. And the riders are going to see an elevated platform. So not only the purse, but I think there's going to be more opportunity for them to make money with sponsorships and other things because we're going to have this elevated platform that's now one um, as opposed to, again, fragmentation. Right, right. And then lastly, uh, a side note to this today a little bit is that the Supercross schedule was also announced. So for you guys personally, we get to see the full 17 rounds. Uh, we're going back to some places. We're going to some new places like in San Diego at Snapdragon Stadium. Uh, how excited are you for, for the 17 or the 17 round Supercross season in 23? I'm super excited. I mean, I love it. Anaheim Angel Stadium staff was here today for this announcement. They're excited. Um, you know, A1 is special. But you're right. We're going to Snapdragon Stadium in San Diego, which is it's new. It's brand new. They just opened it. Um, it's back in the parking lot where Qualcomm was. And that Qualcomm experience, we love Petco. Petco is beautiful. It's a beautiful place. But the race day and the fan experience at Qualcomm and now at Snapdragon is just so much more parking lots, tailgating, that type of thing. So excited about that, excited about going back to uh, Nashville. That's gonna be a big one. So Nashville was a fan favorite when we went there a few years ago, we're working to get it back. And so it's it's exciting, I'm, I'm loving it. It's funny because, you know, I'm used to talking about Supercross, now I'm loving talking about motocross as well. So um, the entire thing and, and announcing the schedule together just kinda icing on the cake because we know it's coming and we've got that January 7th date to look forward to.